This year, we're adding a kind of a field trip component to the Soaring Ballot program. Today, we have the privilege to take members of the greatest generation as well as members of the newest generation on an epic trip to New Orleans, to the National World War II Museum. We're not only taking 45 World War II veterans there, but today we've added 45 high school students, so it's going to be an educational, inspiring experience for all of them. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. I've never been to the World War II Museum. You know, I've never met a veteran, especially someone from the greatest generation. It's a rare opportunity when a student gets to come face to face with a person who is a part of history. Learning about his ships are really neat and how they'd pull him up to the shore and they'd walk basically straight off the boat onto the land. To come to understand history in a way that a textbook or a, the most engaging teacher's lesson could never have provided. He's learning from me, you know, just exactly what we did, how we did it. To get to have this time with someone who gave so much almost at the same age, that's amazing. When I was his age, a whole class was drafted. And then what they're tasked with is to come back and tell that story to their classmates, tell that story to elementary students, and continue the legacy. World War II veterans are soon going to be no more. Our students are going to be blown away by being with true American heroes for three days. And what I hope is that our World War II veterans are also blown away by our fantastic kids that get to go on this trip. What a glorious, glorious day for those of us who served 75 years ago. We hope on this trip to in some small measure relate and convey to this next generation something of why we did it and how we did it, when we did it. Welcome aboard. Thank you. In 11D. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The one next to me. This is my great uncle Marcus. Oh, I kiss all of them. All the flight attendants. I get the one, one too, huh? This is the one I told you is the bigger flirt. Oh, I see. Hey, everybody. You want a little something? You don't get anything. <laughs> what would you like? You having fun? I am. So I'm far, so good? Yeah, it's amazing. Wait till you get to the museum. I'm so excited. It's pretty special. See the escorts over here, they're stopping traffic on this highway over here so we can go through. We love doing this for them, uh, for their service. We, yeah. we love doing this for them. It, it's an honor for us. Without a doubt. This is the National World War II Museum. Look up, Jack. Look at that. It's pretty magnificent. <laughs> On Saturday, January 20th, 1945, just a little over three years from the beginning of the war, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was inaugurated for an unprecedented fourth term. I'd like to share an excerpt from his inaugural address. In the days and the years that are to come, we shall work for a just and honorable peace, a durable peace, as today we work and fight total victory in war. We can and we will. 
achieve such a peace. We are truly in the company of heroes. We can never fully express our gratitude for all you've done, but we hope in some small way that you would carry our appreciation and our thanks from these halls back to your homes, knowing that what you have done for our country and the world will never be taken for granted or forgotten. And to you students, I say, remember always what you learn here. You are the next generation of leaders, and I know you will leave here with a new understanding and appreciation for your freedom and what it takes to protect it. Keep that in your heart always. There they come. The bringing of the students, I think, is extraordinarily special because here we've got the, the greatest generation teaching the youngest generation, and they're having a common experience together. I didn't know what to think when we first started. She came up to me and said, I'm your student. She got me talking, and I haven't stopped since. I'm hoarse. It's really incredible how veterans changed our lives in so many ways, and we don't really get to learn about that a lot in most uh, classes. I could read 100 books on World War II, but having one conversation with my veteran showed me more about how they felt and what they were going through in the war. Well, I was a Japanese prisoner. That's his book right there that he gave to me. It talks about his, uh, <laughs> talks about his plane going down. We're not just reading about these guys in their history books or seeing it in a movie. They're holding hands with them. They're holding hands with history. You don't learn it out of a book. You gotta get it from people who know. Yes, sir. This weapon here is called the M1 carbine. B, fine. Carbine? Fine. Carbine? carbine? Yeah. It's my rifle. We're getting to, with gloves obviously, get to hold all the uh, like weapons and some of their clothing with that they got to wear. It's really, really cool just because it's something that it seems so far away, but with this it's actually like bringing it to you so you can actually touch it and hold it and see what's actually happening. So it went inside? It went inside. Let me see. It's just an amazing experience. This museum is a celebration of the American spirit. Her Where was served he? in the army. He was in the Battle of Bulls. She's talking about you. Yeah. Oh, we don't listen to our kids. <laughs> that was a good thing. It's amazing spending time with our veterans. We never get tired of learning from them, hearing what they have done for our country, hearing the personal story. My veteran is Jim Nieder and I have learned a lot. Jim was one of the liberators of Dachau. He helped liberate one of the camps. I saw that tattoo on the wrist. And I looked at Otto and I said, were you in Dachau? Yeah. So when you came through that camp, they were there? Yeah. They were there? Yeah. Isn't that incredible? It's emotional. And you have no idea how a grown man can hug you. It's been really priceless. I don't think I'll ever stop talking about this trip. We'll be friends forever, I'll tell you, because I'm going to keep in touch with this young man. And I'll never see these things the same way. Did What's you your favorite, favorite song, song during the 40s? Oh, it's probably, it, 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 well, as far as jazz goes, it's still in the mood. In the mood. I love that. In the mood, the synagogue, in the mood. Wonderful. Can I read what you've written? No, no, no. <laughs> I wonder if you can take a picture with my bed. Yes, absolutely. This was really amazing. Thank you so much. I just, I, I like, I can't say it. You're back. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. God bless you, brother. Thank you. You have a safe trip back, okay? For most kids, their heroes are celebrities or sports icons, and my heroes are our veterans, whether they be World War II or Desert Storm. It's been a revelation. It's been beautiful to be with this, this generation. They tend to applaud us and laud us and make the heroes out of us, and we're just the survivors. The ones who are not here and who paid the ultimate sacrifice are the ones that ought to be honored. And certainly remember, we should never, ever forget their sacrifice.
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. I appreciate you very much. We are very excited today to be able to present you with our mail call, Douglas Blair, George Champa. Thank you.